Canvas gives you several different ways to get into entering grades. One of them is by clicking the to do over here on the right hand side of my homepage. These are the things that I have outstanding to grade. If I click on these, it takes me directly to SpeedGrader, which is Canvas's assignment grading tool. Okay, let's close this one. We can also get to SpeedGrader by going into any assignment or discussion board. And then finally, we can go into our grades tab to enter grades individually. We're gonna start with the grades tab, but stick around because I've got so many things that I wanna show you in SpeedGrader. And a lot of these tips are things that other teachers don't know about. So starting in the grades tab, let's go ahead and get right to it. Um, first of all, I've got my student column pretty much hidden, which is great. You can also apply some filters. Applying filters can be really helpful if you're looking for a particular assignment or assignment group. There are also some settings that you can use over here on the right hand side. I've got an entire video all about setting up this grade book. Look for the link down in my description. So I'm just going to click the X here. This is where you would want to enter in individual grades. Let's say that students have handed in papers to you or you want to make some individual changes to scores. Um, I'm going to start with this IRL in real life discussion board. If I hover on it, it shows me the name that's favorite favorite drink. So again, just fun discussion boards. You can also make these bigger. You can expand them by hovering over the line between columns, clicking and dragging to expand and change. Okay. But what I really want to do here is grade them. Now, anytime I see that little, is it a piece of paper? Anytime I see that little piece of paper, it means that they submitted to, this is a discussion board. So they participated there. I'm going to give all of those students five points. Now I could type over the little paper and do five and then enter, five and then enter and continue to input grades this way. But I wanna give almost everybody a five. If I scroll down to the bottom, the student at the very bottom did not submit anything. So I'm gonna click on that little dash. I'm gonna change that to a zero first, and then I'm gonna show you a super amazing shortcut. We're gonna give all of these students five points. To do that, you're gonna hover on the assignment name. You're gonna go over here, these three little dots show up when you hover. You're gonna click on the three dots and then choose set to fault grade. I wanna give everybody five points except that student at the bottom. So I already gave them a zero and I don't wanna overwrite already existing grades. So it's important to put those zeros in first and then we'll set default grade and it will take just a few seconds. So we've got all 12 of our student scores updated. Let me click OK. And there they all, all fives except that last student. Um, next, we want to be able to set scores as being excused. You'll notice in this class, I've got several of these scores that have a fill color, that color behind them as blue. I've got a couple down here that are pink. If you click on those scores, this little arrow on the side appears. You click on that arrow and it will tell you what those colors mean. The blue is for late, so you saw a lot of blue in this class. I allow late homework, not other late assignments. Um, the pink is missing. The default for something missing is for it not to count towards the grade. So if you want those to be a zero, it's important to put the zeros in there. You can also mark something as excused. So let's mark something as excused for this last student. I'm going to click the X. I'm going to go back to an assignment. How about this? Tell us about your future you. I'm going to click on that dash as if I was going to enter a grade. So I'm just going to click on the dash. That little arrow appears, I click the arrow, and I wanna mark this one as excused. Now it does the same thing grade-wise, right? It wasn't gonna count it towards their grade with the little dash, and it's not gonna count it towards their grade with the excused, but what's really nice about that excused designation is it doesn't show up on the student's to-do list, so they know that that assignment anyway is not outstanding. You'll notice too on the sidebar, it gives you a few other options. So I could assign a grade with the sidebar here. I could add comments as well. I can also go directly to the speed grader, which would allow me to see their work. They don't have any work here. Um, we're going to go right back to this, but I want to show you how you would look at scores for individual students rather than the entire grid of scores. To do that, you're going to click on the student name way over here on the left hand side, and I'm going to my test student. 
My test student lives at the bottom of my roster because I at some point did a student view. This is a great way to play around with your grade book, to practice grading without affecting your student's work. Once I clicked on my student's name, I got a similar looking sidebar. But what we want to do now is to go to grades. So I'm going to click on grades and this brings up the list of assignments and their grades. This is my test student. So most of it is missing, of course, but I do have one assignment here that's showing up as late. I can also update individual scores here and opposite from what you'd think, you don't double click on the score. Instead, you click on the assignment name. So I've clicked on the assignment name, say that they did this on paper and handed it into me instead, and they got the full eight points, enter. And then I would also give them a comment and I can say nice job or something. And then I would definitely click save. Now, what the grades lacks is the ability to add an assignment when you're in the grades tab. This is really frustrating because if I have, say, um, an exam that I've given in class and I want to enter the scores, I would love to be able to enter my assignment here, but I can't. Instead, I would need to go back to the course and over to assignments. Mine's way down at the bottom. If you want an assignment to show up in your grade book, you need to add it here. So I'm gonna click the plus sign and you can add it to any of your categories if you've got categories. I'm just gonna do an assignment here and I'm just gonna say in class activity and I can choose a date and a time and the point total. I really wanna to go to more options though. If I'm just manually entering in grades, I do not want this to show up as an online submission type. That's gonna confuse my students. Instead, you can either change this to on paper or no submission. So they know that that's not something that they need to submit. You're just entering in those grades. So are you overwhelmed yet? There are so many things to learn and get used to when it comes to grading, but you are going to get there. SpeedGrader is next, and it's a really great interface. It is Canvas's assignment grading tool. You can get to SpeedGrader in multiple ways. You could have gotten there through the assignments tab where we were, but I'm actually gonna get there through my module. And I know that I wanna grade this construction costs part two. To get to SpeedGrader this way, you click on it and then you click on SpeedGrader. The other way to get there is by clicking on the assignment in the to-do list. I actually just have one assignment left to grade and that's gonna take me directly to the assignment in SpeedGrader. Let's click this and get back into SpeedGrader. So I'm looking at the grade right now for my test student. I've got their assignment here, which they've uploaded online. Um, just to give you a little bit of the layout, you can give yourself more real estate in the grading pane by hovering over the three dots here in this middle bar. And if I hover, I get that little double arrow. Clicking, holding, and dragging will give me more room in my grading pane. I can also increase the zoom of my student's assignment. Sometimes their assignments come in sideways and I can use this little rotation arrow to rotate the assignment. I want it to be actually upright. Now you might not have all of the tools that I am showing right here. If you don't, you're gonna see once you hover up in this upper right hand corner of the toolbar, you're gonna see this little scroll bar. And if you scroll that scroll bar down, you will get more of those options. It happens to me when I'm on my Chromebook. Okay, um, other things, there's so many things. You can click on this uh, settings tool and then options, and you can sort the student list. This is kind of nice sometimes to do it by submission status. So you do all the ones that need to be graded first. Um, some other options are here as well. I don't usually use a bunch of those. Let me cancel this. You can also hide the grades. This is really good if you're not sure how you're going to scale your grades and you might end up changing them. You can click this eyeball and then hide grades. Once the grades are hidden, you would go back and post the grades. So if I do hide here, I can either do this in the gradebook or I can do this here. And then I can go and click on the eyeball again and I can post grades, okay, and then post grades. Hopefully my students didn't just get two messages that said that I hid and posted the scores. Okay, anyway, I wanna grade this assignment. So I have created a rubric for this assignment. I'm a huge believer in rubrics. I've got a video on rubrics down below. It's a massive time saver. 
just to give you an idea, if I were to grade um, with the rubric, I would go through and check everything and then I can give either full marks, no marks, partial credit if I've got those in there, and then it would score everything. Right now they've got uh, a total score of four points. And then I would click Submit Assessment. So let me cancel. You do not need to have a rubric. I can also just assign those four points by just typing in a four right here. But the number isn't as important as your feedback to your students. So to do the feedback, I love using the tools that we've got up here. Um, my favorite tool, the one I use probably the most, is the free text annotation. If I click on that text annotation, it allows me to drop in a text box. Let me click on that again. There we go. It allows me to drop in a text box. Right now I've got a white background or you can have no background. And I want this to really show up, so I'm going to use um, a red font and you can change the size. And then I can click on this and I can just say, um, this graph looks great exclamation mark. Um, I can also though, my other favorite one is this one. So this point annotation, and this is great if you want to pinpoint something or if you've got a longer comment and you don't want to write over all of their work. So for example, let's say that this particular point was incorrect. It's actually correct. Um, this is not the, I'll say this is not the correct point. And then I just click off of it to um, put that annotation there. If I wanted to get rid of either of these annotations, I would click on the annotation on the feedback and then I get a little garbage can. Same thing would happen with this, I get a little garbage can. The other thing that I can do with the text comment, notice that I get the garbage can, but as I hover back over the text comment, I also get this moving tool, those two crossed arrows. So if I click and drag now, I can move this around a little bit. Let me go ahead and just do that. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this one as well. And then, okay. You've got some other things up here that I encourage you to play around with, like highlighting, um, crossing out. You even have this free draw annotation tool. And this would only be great if you maybe had a pen because you could like draw this in here, right? Wow, two plus two. But if you had a if you had a stylus, that would be really great to do as well. Um, let me trash that one instead of clicking on the checkbox. Okay, sure you want to delete this? Yes, please, I do. Once you've got it the way you want it, and you've either used the rubric or not, but you've got their score there then you can start to focus in on the feedback that you wanna give them the assignment comments. I'm gonna give myself some more real estate so we've got some more room to look at those assignment comments. Um, before I do that, notice that I've got just a single assignment that's been submitted. If your student has submitted more than once, like this student has, you'll notice that you've got this little submission to view here with the drop down arrow, and you can look at the updated assignment, you can look at the previous assignment, and also change that classification from late to missing, excused, or none. Students will also sometimes upload multiple pages of their work, and I can click between those by clicking on the different links underneath Submitted Files. Back to our test student. Let's give our test student some comments. So as I scroll down here, I actually have pretty much a rich content editor. So I can give them a nice comment, test student, but I can do better than this too. Um, you did great work or whatever. Now I can um, do a lot of different annotating. If I click this here, I can also add a course link. If I wanted to say, I really want you to go back and watch a particular video, I can choose that video and add it into the comment. Let me just click on that X there. So I've got that video there. I can also upload a photo. And if I upload a photo, sometimes I will upload a copy of the key, which keeps me from having to do so, so, so many corrections that honestly they may or may not actually look at, right? Um, there's also a math tool here, which I've had uh, kind of mixed reviews with, but it's, it's getting better and better. Let me click the X there. Um, but I also wanted to show you, let me click submit here. You can submit these multiple times. As soon as I have submitted a comment, I can reassign this to the student. So my students are currently working on a version of this assignment and they didn't do great on it the first go round. So I have given them feedback and then chosen this reassign 
assignment um, button, which puts it back on their to-do list. So that's a great way to have your students resubmit their work. Um, also, what else, what else? Oh, see this little comment thing here? And it says five next to it. This is my comment library. Um, if I click on it, it will show me the different comments that I have saved to my comment library. Um, so I can choose one of these and it just drops it in right there, which is super great. And then I can add the student's name up above, add the student's name up above. To add something to my library, I would just scroll down to the bottom, create that comment that I want to reuse, and then click Add to Library. You've also got some great editing tools here. Notice that I've got suggestions when typing on. So if I wanted to bring up one of these and I knew that I had this one, you need to redo part three. Let me click the back arrow and I start to type that you need to redo, it brings up that comment, which is such a great time saver. And I can click on it if that is in fact what I want. I even have my name at the end, which is great. Now I've got lots of coworkers, especially in the English department, it seems like, that use either video or audio recorded feedback. To do that, you would just click on this little camera icon. So if I click on the camera icon, I'm recording and then recording on top of recording. So it was a little bit goofy, but it's ready for me to record my media. Oh, I'm doing a screen capture right now, which is great. I can also disable the screen capture and this would be doing just an audio recording. I can also add in, let me see if it will let me add in my camera. Yep, I can also do an audio recording for the students. So that is amazing, so many options there. And then that last tool that I wanna to show you is the speech recognition. This is speech to text, a great time saver. If I click the record button, nice work on this assignment. And then that goes right into the comment section. For those of you that are seasoned, let us know how you use the comments. I know it depends on what you teach and how you teach, but I would love to know how you use those comments. I've got some bonuses for those of you that have stuck with me this long. Some things that you want to be careful of in SpeedGrader, and it comes in how you set up your assignments. So I found my construction cost part two. I'm going to click on that one, and then I want to edit it to show you what submission types I have selected. As I scroll down here, I've got my online submission types as file uploads only. You can also restrict those types. Um, the warning is about allowing a text entry. I'm going to go ahead and allow a text entry so you can see what it looks like and the limitations you've got in grading it. Let me hit save. Now we're going to take the assignment as a student. I'm going to click view as student. Um, I'm still in the assignment, so I'm going to go ahead and start that assignment. And as I scroll up, there's my rubric so they can see my rubric. As I scroll up, they've got all of these different options. Now I've got text entry here, which means that they've got this rich content editor and they can say, here is my assignment answers, blah, blah, blah. Um, they've got all the, all the choices, right? I'm going to hit submit assignment just as you would a student. So it's been successfully submitted. Now let's go and grade it. So I'm going to leave student view. And we are going to go and find that. Actually, if I go to the home page, I'll bet it's going to show up as an ungraded assignment. And there it is. So grade construction costs part two. I've actually got five here to grade. Let me open this and get to that test student. And notice how it says paper view. I can change it to plain text view. It doesn't matter because what is missing now is that annotation toolbar. I cannot add comments now in their work. This is one of the really limiting submission types and I wish it wasn't. I often just have this one unchecked so students can't submit this way. The other limitation, at least currently, is the .heic file type, which comes from a lot of iPhones. So it's really unfortunate because it's pretty common. You can restrict that file type, but I find that very few students use it. But what I need to do is to download this to be able to preview it. Canvas does not preview it for me. So I'm just gonna download it. And then I go to a free site, which is H-E-I-C to J-P-J. So H-E-I-C to JPEG. And I just click on this. There's tons of ads, but it's worth it. I'm gonna click the plus sign. I'm gonna grab that student's file. 
convert it to a JPEG or your computer might open it here and then you'll be able to view it and grade it. But even though we can now view it, it's still limiting because I can't put comments on it in SpeedGrader. There is so much to learn when it comes to Canvas. You are doing amazing. Take a look at my other videos. I've chosen one for you here. I'd love any questions or comments that you've got for me down below.